EdTech Mondays Kenya is supported by the Mastercard Foundation Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning in ICT and EdTech East Africa. Hello and welcome to EdTech Monday Kenya, a monthly series of conversations. My name is Moses Kemibaro, your host and moderator for the Kenya edition. This month we look at mainstreaming the hybrid model of learning. Hybrid learning involves a combination of in-person learning and remote learning and is not necessarily taught in a traditional classroom. It's increasingly been seen as a way of ensuring that all learners can be accommodated in a learning environment that can be in-person or virtual. Over one million children of primary school age were out of school in Kenya, according to an out-of-school children initiative study conducted in Kenya in 2020. The situation was worsened due to the impact of COVID-19 related school closures, followed by a drought in many of the focus counties. As a result, the pandemic became a key catalyst for the adoption of hybrid learning in Kenya. This transition was largely enabled by a proliferation of affordable and capable smartphones also as well as consumer electronics such as radios and televisions to receive educational programming. As we explore the mainstreaming of hybrid model of learning, we ask what are the key factors that we need to consider when making hybrid learning practical and sustainable for all learners in Kenya? Please send us your responses to edtechmonday at mastercardfdn.org. Allow me to introduce our panel for this month. Wanjiku Badoni, Regional Manager of Impact and Evaluation at World Reader, Danielle Ocheng, Education and Research Consultant at Dubongo, and James Kamau Gitiro, HP Idea Fellow, Microsoft Innovation Educator Expert and Teacher at Manyata Primary School in Ikipia County. Rosa Molo is our Sign Language Interpreter. So maybe we can start off with you telling us a little bit more about your thoughts and insights on the state of hybrid learning in Kenya. And maybe we can start off with you, Wanjiku. Thank you so much, Moses, for having me. Hybrid learning has really been adapted um, and accelerated because of the pandemic. Um, we cannot also ignore the dynamic environment, the tech environment in the country. Uh, we've seen I, the government of Kenya really allocating a lot of resources in ICT for learning. Um, and the, I, you know, one of the core principles in, C, in the current uh, curriculum, uh, the CBC curriculum, is around digital literacy. And so that really is the foundation that World Reader uses to implement our projects and to reach out to families and communities to encourage learning beyond the typical four walls of a classroom. Thank you so much, Wanjiku. James, I'd love to hear your perspective, especially coming from the teacher perspective of how hybrid learning is evolving in the country. Thank you, Moses, for hosting me in this edition. Let me say hybrid learning. We as teachers, uh, we are taking it up slowly, especially after the pandemic, that is when the teachers saw the importance of the model. And we are taking it slowly up in the villages, or, although we are having few challenges here and there. Danielle, what about the Ubongo perspective, especially given the fact that your organization is so busy and, and, and able to produce a lot of content that is televised uh, across the continent? I think I'll start by saying Ubongo is considered Africa's largest classroom because it's a most watched show. And not only is it entertainment, it's also education based. And one of our goals, as Wanjiku said, was through the pandemic, we realized, so in Kenya, we used to be on only one station. And then when the pandemic hit, we realized every child needs to be able to access our content. And we decided now to open up. We are in over 20 radio stations right now. TV stations and even more radio stations. And our goal was to make sure we reach what we call the last mile child. So as many children as possible. And there's a time the Kenyan team went into like the very remote areas of Kenya. And I think one of our greatest partners is Akili Network. And what we found is no matter how remote we went in, as long as those kids had an access to TV, Akili Network was there and the kids could reach our content and also they're on radio. So we also found that parents were really excited that the kids could continue learning despite the pandemic. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, maybe coming back to you, Wanjiku, um, I'd like to know a little bit more about um, the current scenario that you're seeing from the World Reader perspective um, on the ground in Kenya in terms of what we're doing with schools uh, and more importantly, the opportunities and challenges that you're facing in the area of hybrid learning. Yeah. The opportunities are many. Um, at World Reader, because we do provide access um, to digital content, the opportunity that we, we really leverage on is digital. Um, that in itself is scalable, um, it is sustainable. As an organization, we uh, implement our projects and our approach as you know, 
I'll give the acronym ABCDE, um, where we provide a free resource, a digital resource, um, where you can access culturally relevant um, content. Um, and these books are, you know, accessed through local publishers, right? And so it is aligned with the CBC curriculum and supplements um, academic, um, any, anyone who has like academic uh, goals. We also work through and with partners to make sure that we are able to reach and support communities and families and also schools, for example. Um, one of the things that we, we encourage, and just like um, Danielle has said about uh, leveraging on different types of, of devices and technology. We as at Waldida have worked through community-based radio stations to increase our reach, but also to support families to understand the resources that are available to them and how to harness on these resources. Um, we're very big on capacity building because we know it's not enough to just deploy um, Ed, an ed tech solution. There needs to be a lot of support given so that um, that solution, like for us at World Reader, the digital reading solution, Booksmart, can be incorporated into the daily lives of parents, of the learners, but also integrated into the classrooms. And what about the, the rural scenario where people maybe have challenges around getting online, possibly the cost of access? How do you, you know, deal with those circumstances? So. The good thing with, with Kenya as, as it stands, we, we, the connectivity is, you know, the whole country, it's countrywide. Um, what we acknowledge is that not everyone owns a smartphone. You may have access to it, but you may not be in a position to own the smartphone. So what we do is we work with community resource centers, we work with community libraries, we work with schools to make sure that there's an ecosystem in the communities that enables a learner to access our digital content within the home but also outside of the home, right? Um, when you talk about the cost of data, it is one of the hindrances that our parents mention when it comes to accessing our digital content. Um, what we've done as an, as an organization is really optimize our application. And therefore, you don't need a lot of data to be able to download Booksmart. And the other thing is we also operate offline. So you're able to download um, a certain number of books and you're able to read from the shelf, um, the downloaded shelf, so that you can access that without connectivity. Maybe we can come to you, Danielle, and maybe share with us the Obongo perspective in terms of how you're able to do hybrid learning through your platforms and also especially reaching some of the marginalized communities, those who might be out in rural areas, who might not also have access to some of the devices and tools that allow them to then experience hybrid learning. Yeah, yeah. thanks for the question. So one thing about Ubongo is we realized, as you mentioned, that a lot of the kids who are going to lack behind in terms of learning are those in the marginalized areas. And we call that, for Ubongo, we call it the last mile region. And so what we ended up finding is, so there was a time we went to Kakuma, because we're also working integrating um, refugee education and their stories and kids. So when we were in the camps, we found that over 80% of the families inside the camp only have access to, have no access to TV. So they have access to radio. And one of the strategies we started re-employing is because as much as Ubongo is also very um, TV based, is now starting to incorporate our content through radio. And like even like right now what we've started since last year was writing for radio and adapting for TV to make sure that even the child who's listening can still feel as engaged and as happy as a child um, who's watching. And we're partnering with a lot of organizations. One that we're actually partnering with in um, Kakuma Refugee Camp is called Poticas. And one thing is we trying to get the content out there. And as Wanjiku mentioned, the challenge usually is you need uh, like the distribution aspect of it is what is usually the hardest part of it because it's very expensive or, or really hard to reach certain areas. So getting more, one thing we're trying to work on is getting more partners who are interested in our content, obviously because the children love it and would be willing to take this content even further. But we still also do that especially through radio because we realize that's the largest way we can reach um, children, the largest classroom we're going to have in Africa for quite a long while. James, I'd really like to hear your perspective because you're a teacher at Manyata School. Um, what is different about how you deliver, um, you know, uh, the learning experiences through hybrid? And what are the steps and interventions that you think are required to support teachers like you to be able to do a more effective job through hybrid learning? Thank you, Moses. Well, as, a, as an ICT teacher coach, down there on the ground, 
uh, we normally uh, fight, fight teachers who, who still, still have the fear for technology. Let me say for the hybrid model of learning to succeed, there are three things that, are, that needs to be considered. And I'm happy my, uh, my friend here, Ubongo and Wadrida, are really taking part in, in it. First, we need the technology, Bonamosis. And uh, by that, we mean that uh, we need the, the digital devices out there in schools, whereby the learners, the teachers, and the parents can access uh, the digital content. Point number two, we need the infrastructure. We need the policies. Yeah, we need some intervention, whereby we as teachers, uh, we get observed as we use the, the models, especially when we are integrating ICT into our learning. Number three, that is where the teachers come in, where we have the human resource. For the hybrid model to succeed, we need the, the teachers there below as the aid users. Now, you find that presently most of our teachers lack the skills. So, for the model to succeed, we need to upscale uh, the capacity of our teachers. We need to upscale what they know. And for that, we are training our teachers to, to change the, their mindset, to unlearn what they think they, they already know, so that they can relearn again. And therefore, uh, when our teachers will, will be empowered, the technologies there will be able to, to do it. But for now, like you now in, in our place back then in Laikipia, we have poor internet con connectivity. Some of our schools lack internet. There are some schools that, that are in the farthest end that lacks even the, the electricity. And, uh, but I'm happy with what uh, the word readers are doing. In our library is there, like in our place, Rumruti. Yeah, just the other day I went there and I was able to find our kids very busy using the, the word reader apps. And uh, I was like, wow, they should bring this even into our schools. So there are connectivity challenges, there are device challenges, uh, but also the skills challenge. And if we can close some of those gaps, then the teacher experience will be better. I think that brings me to my next point with Wanjiku. I think World Reader has an interesting program or project called the Raising Readers. And I'd like to hear more about how that's bringing parents into the hybrid learning experience and more importantly, what you're hoping to achieve with this initiative. Um, yeah, so thank you. The, the Raising Readers, it, it was actually a research study that aimed um, to find out what, how can families leverage on mobile technology um, to engage with their children when, when it comes to the learning process. And what we did, the approach that I gave the ABCDE, what we did is we broke that down um, and implemented this study in, in an isolated approach. Therefore, we trained parents, you know, independently and then had another group or cohort of, of parents who were receiving messages, for example. And what we wanted to see is actually test what intervention would yield in the greatest, would be most effective, basically. Um, and so what we found out at the very beginning um, during baseline, we found out that 97% of the parents recognize that reading is important to the success of their children. But then they did identify that lack of time and lack of resources was one of their major blockers. And so what we did is we, re we adapted our modalities and our intervention to address some of those barriers. So for example, when it came to training, we produced and, and came up with an eight module toolkit that looked at um, creating this awareness around reading. Why is reading important? You know, the foundational skills. Um, how do you incorporate reading into your daily life? One of the major results from the project is really coming to, uh, together to create this, to strengthen the triad yeah, of, of education, where you have your learner, your, your teachers, but also the families. At the very beginning, we, we had very clearly um, from, from many parents, and I'm happy that we have a teacher here, that most of the communication that goes out to families is around school fees and the lack of the payment of, of that, um, around the, the child's behavior, whether good or bad, 
um, and, and towards you know, a project in a school, so fundraising efforts. But then we started challenging teachers. How then can you engage t uh, your parents to bring them on board, help them read, help them know the capacity, the reading capacity of their children, not just grade level, to know how my child is performing and how do you encourage that. So we had very many parents meetings going on. Um, we saw an increase in terms of turnout. Before we, we will see, uh, you know, primarily most of, of the parents who would come were the mothers. But towards the end, we started seeing fathers being very involved in the child's learning process and coming to attend um, these parents' meetings. And so it, it was a very fantastic project. We have very good insights. We're actually at the, at the point of making sense or synthesizing the data. And we'll be very happy, Moses, if you'll have us, to come back and share some of the insights. Um, but beyond that, we will be sharing that on, our, on the World Reader website. But those were some of the learnings. I'd like to come back to you, Danielle, and maybe talk a little bit about Bongo's experience around the fact that you build this formidable um, hybrid capability across radio, across you know, TV, and all the different ways, vernacular content. Um, where do you see this going from your perspective, where Bongo is involved and in creating these opportunities around hybrid learning in Kenya? For us, what's key is we do what we call user testing. So the user experience is the most important. One thing I always say is as adults who you've studied about all these things, you assume you know what the children want to hear or what the parents, for example, until you go to the ground and you realize, oh, what we're thinking is not what's there. So like our content, the reason why it's the most loved and most watched is because our content is created with the children, right from the beginning, through the middle process, if they want any changes to the end before um, we see whatever it is on TV or on radio. And where I see this going is, I love what World Reader is doing, um, especially for the parent side, which we do a lot for the children and also now moving into the teachers because we realize our content as a curriculum designer myself is, we create this content using the national curriculum to make sure we're achieving the objectives. And it's, it's also- Fully aligned, yeah? Fully aligned with the national curriculum. We started with the previous one, when it was there, we moved into the CBC one. And so what we are also working towards is having like the expert, experts like teacher James and going to the field and finding out what works in the classroom for you guys and finding out from the children how engaging do, is the content for them and seeing how can we actually integrate um, these two. And even when the children are at home, because I know the hybrid is being also able to not be in the classroom and just learn from wherever you are, is if you're using, for example, on radio, for the children who don't have access to TV, are they still as engaged? Are they still learning as much as they are when they're watching, other children are watching TV? And I know we're currently doing a study like that in Nigeria, because uh, our content is also in Yoruba, is, but also they're using the, both the Yoruba and the English version to see is, are children learning as much if they only have access to radio as they are when it's TV? Because radio, as I said, is what we have the largest access to and seeing what do we need to tweak to make sure that it's also equally as engaging of a classroom when the child is listening at home as if they were actually watching um, the content. So that's where Ubongo actually really tries to form that kind of the hybrid model. But we're also now looking a lot at the teachers because they are the primary source of education and learning for the children. And most of the time, you probably create it works with the kids, but the teachers would be like, okay, I think let's move this a bit like this. This is what's going to work for the classroom. This is not what's going to work. How can we change this? How can we add this? So finding those ways of integrating um, all stakeholders to make sure that these hybrid models are actually impactful and the children are actually learning. Because the end of it is you don't want content where it's just entertaining children and there's no growth, but they're actually learning um, in the process. I have a question specifically to you, James, because I think you're in a unique scenario. Yeah. You know, you've traveled many, many hours to be with us here today. Yes. So many would say you're in rural Kenya, where you are. Um, and we saw what happened during the droughts. We saw what happened during the pandemic. How do we create more resilient systems for hybrid learning? And what role can you as a teacher and teachers like you play in creating a more structured approach to how we deploy hybrid learning in Kenya? Well, most is, I think, for the model to succeed. First, the capacity of the teachers has to be built. Yeah, like now in our rural place, uh, there were appointed some teachers who are trained to become teacher coaches. Uh, and thereafter, they were allocated schools where they would go and uh, coach the teachers. So for the model to succeed, 
we have the gadgets. Most of the schools in Kenya have the gadgets that were given by the government. But the teachers have the fear of technology. They are still new, you see. So first, the teachers have to be prepared well enough. And also, we need to have the, I mean, the, the connectivity. For us to be able to reach out those learners who are not in school, we need the connectivity, the internet connectivity, so that we can, we can be able to reach them out there. So I think for, for the system to work, the teachers uh, need to, to come out of the outdated pedagogy where the teacher was the, the man of the day, so that we can bring in our learners for knowledge production. Well, it seems like we're almost out of time. And I think I'd like to ask each one of you in one minute or less to tell us where do you see hybrid learning going in Kenya, specifically for learners, in terms of how it's going to evolve and more importantly, where you see it going in the next few years. Maybe we can start off with you, Danielle. For me, I think I would say after having one pandemic, I think we are a bit more mentally prepared for anything. And everybody's now, after 2020, coming in to think, how can we ensure learners are still learning, even if they end up being at home? And I feel like despite the pandemic ending, we need to continue those conversations and actually have different organizations that are working with children to make sure that in case of something, and even if there's nothing, but there's out of school children, how do we make sure we continue reaching these kids so that like learning um, continues happening and how can partners who, for example, may not be producing the content like Ubongo and World Reader, but they are able to go and distribute it. How can they partner with organizations like ours and say that, okay, give us the content, we'll take it to the remote areas. Because I know like for Ubongo, we do give flash disks for free, by the way, for content for areas that don't have um, access to TV or because we know we in the most remote areas we found, as he said, a lot of schools, even in mad schools that had the laptop and a projector, but had no idea how to use it. So empowering these teachers, but we do give them the content for free for the flash disks, show them how to use it, but that's not enough. Can we have like people like James and all the who are empowering teachers to get to these people and like here's Ubongo's content that can be used in the classroom, here's World Reader's content. Can you train the teachers on how to do it? And in case anything happens again, how are we ensuring our learners are still learning despite it all? Well, thank you for sharing, Danielle. James, in one minute or less, give us your thoughts around the future and evolution of hybrid learning in Kenya. Thank you, Moses. I think uh, our government is doing a lot, uh, maybe to make the model succeed. For example, availing the smartphones, the cheap, the affordable smartphones, that is, a, that is an advantage to our parents out there in the villages because they can, they can be able to access the digital content. Number two, we have the teacher coaches. I feel that the, we need more teacher coaches in every region of Kenya who can capacity build the, who the teachers know. Uh, and finally, yeah, we need uh, the, the high speed internet connectivity. Yeah, because like now, uh, the teachers already know how to use the video conferencing tools out there, but there is no internet connection. So I think that requires to be uh, scaled up. Well, thank you so much, James. And lastly, uh, Wanjiku, maybe you can share with us thoughts around the future, the evolution, the possibilities going forward where hybrid learning is in Kenya within the next minute or less. Yeah, I think the future is very bright, um, especially now that many things have gone online, like Huduma services, for example. Embracing digital has now become, part, you know, second nature to us. So the future is bright. I think the the thing that I want to talk, uh, Daniel has mentioned about partnership. So just looking at the different partners, uh, different uh, organizations that are in the different in the space, how can we come together? How can we collaborate? Leverage on each other's strengths um, to make sure that we leave no one behind. Because of the digital divide, we don't want to continue expanding it, but we want to narrow it with our interventions, making them sustainable and 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 really scalable. I think. Um, the challenge is really having the learner at the center. What, what is appropriate, what is relevant to the, to the learner, and then how do we work around that? 
thinking also of parents, when you think of, of tech, what digital literacy skills do they have? In some of the communities that we work in, we also have to um, work and, and program around low literacy skills, not just digital, but low literacy skills. So how do we bring everyone on board without leaving anyone behind? So that's that's a challenge, but then in terms of the future, it is bright, it is bright, Moses. Fantastic. Wanjiku, yeah. thanks so much for joining us today. James, thank you so much for joining us. Danielle, I really have learned so much today around the hybrid learning scenario in Kenya, and more importantly, the different ways and means in which it can be delivered to those who need it the most in our communities. And now, let's hear some perspectives from people who we spoke to regarding their perspectives on hybrid learning in Kenya. As teachers, we really uh, appreciate that uh, the planned kind of learning is assisting us because it is flexible. As a teacher, you might be very busy, but you can be in a position to, to dispense your lesson, even when you are not around. Uh, number two, it, it, is, uh, it ensures you to, to prepare your lesson prior to the lesson, and you, make, you ensure that there, there are not errors, there are no errors in your, in your lesson. Me as a parent, I'm privileged, and I, we thank God for this uh, kind of education that has been brought that we know our children will be learning without any exemption. Whenever we don't have even transport fare for our children to go to school, our children can learn at home, online, and do their things. I only encourage them to continue and come up with policies to bring more learning resources like laptops and smartphones that can help other students to read online you can provide us with the Wi-Fi and uh, so that we, we can uh, uh, get more learning because you know when you have another Wi-Fi so it will not uh, maybe disturb us maybe from buying the data bundles and uh, in this our institution you know when you had us the, when we have the uh, Wi-Fi at least can be, be possible because the Wi-Fi that we are having it is very limited so a quite number of the students cannot use it but uh, I only just urge the organization maybe to add us with more Wi-Fi so that we may have or we improve maybe our learning standard concerning the hybrid online study. Actually the government or education department should do something uh, with the parents so that they can actually afford to fight these items for their children. And they need to empower us or now also to enter this. Because our parents do not know about uh, Wi-Fi, do not know about uh, these online things. So we need to be empowered and taught actually so that we will know what exactly their children are doing. As, as teachers, we would really want to to bleed with whoever can assist that uh, we, are, we, we, are, we are financed in terms of ensuring that uh, we get iPads or better, better, better phones, we, we, get, uh, as we, we, get, we get infrastructure in terms of uh, ICT. We ensure that all schools can access ICT. We have Wi-Fi in, 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 in environments. We also want to ensure that we give some small lessons to parents so that they can assist the, our students at home. Thank you all for watching this edition. Follow more of these conversations on the Mastercard Foundation YouTube channel and the Young Africa Works Facebook page. My name is Moses Kemibaro. See you again in the next edition of EdTech Monday Kenya. EdTech Mondays Kenya is supported by the Mastercard Foundation Center for Innovative Teaching and Learning in ICT and EdTech East Africa.